February 2024 has been quite the month for Sword Online games. Sword Online Integral Factor had its uh, relatively expected drop of performance in February. We had the surprise and quite the popular in some subgroups, the Minato Aqua update for Sword Online Lashley Collection, bringing in a short little story as well as some other improvements. Nothing on SAO Variant Showdown side this time around as expected, and now we know why the February update was pulled so earlier that I included it in the previous month's update. An entirely new console SAO game has been announced, Sword Online Fractured Daydream is now on our horizon, and at the time I'm recording this, uh, the closed beta is happening, tomorrow is going to be day 2, the Friday. So hopefully I'll be able to edit this one before heading into the beta tomorrow in live streams. If you, you want to see how the game looks, how it plays or even join me, it's an online game, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon and we'll see what happens tomorrow and Saturday to Sunday period. But without further ado, Welcome SEO Survivors to Dead Game Report for February 2024 featuring Integral Factor, Last Collection as well as the upcoming Fractured Daydream. And as always this video is brought to you by my channel merch, Sword Online the first day, Ven Squad, Angry Medina and a lot more are available on my Teespring page if you're interested, if you want to give them a look. The link is going to be down below in the description, make sure to check it out. There's even additional discounts for patrons and channel members, make sure to just check your feeds for the bonus discount codes. But with all that out of the way, let's just return to the usual show. I want to get off camera as soon as possible. I'm sick and my voice is about to give up. Alright, I know last month's video was a bit too long, that's what happened when two variant showdown updates got tucked into a single video, this time we'll try to go a little bit faster. Starting with Last Collection, as the only thing to mention in that game is the fact that it received a new update a couple days ago. It was a small one that includes a couple bug fixes here and there, character level cap increased from 70 to 80, a new sub-quest that features enhancements for Kirito's Night Sky Sword and Miyosotis Blade, and probably the most exciting for a large subset of players, inclusion of a short 20 minute story quest with VTuber Minato Aqua. So much so that looking at Steam numbers, the update literally doubled the player count of the game on PC upon arrival. The 20 minute Minato Aqua story basically had more or less the same effect that the first bed scene DLC had and to be frank, my upload of the story really <laughs> highlighted the overall interest to me. Quite impressive, I'm not a fan of the extreme dedication to personalities like the K-pop or the idol culture that they have over there, but goddamn you guys are impressive, I'll, I'll give you that much. That's it from the last collection side, so we move on to Integral Factor. As I stated last month, a drop was pretty much expected for Integral Factor in February, and the question was how big that drop was going to be. And well... It, it, it was it was pretty big. The game had no new Valentine's Day event in early February, just reruns of previous year's events, and the new main floor story featuring floor 17 arrived on February 28 at the very end of the month, barely helping the month of February in terms of performance. Here's the popularity ranking comparison. As usual, blue is the prior month, so January 2024, and red is February. Lovey Dovey Valentine's Order was released on January 31st featuring Lisbeth, Shinon, Yuki and Lifa, but looking at the beginning of February that really did not have much of an effect. A Valentine's Selection Order arrived on February 4 which did maintain a low boost around the same level of the previous new Valentine's Order. Guardians of the Red Robes released on February 7 featuring Alice, Shilika, Yuki and Yujo in Red Riding Hood dresses which was seemingly quite popular, gave a nice little popularity boost to the game, but that was basically the highest point of February until the new floor release at the tail end of the month. Sachi Birthday Order arrived with two new skills, which for some reason had a delayed effect of an additional day, not sure exactly why, creating a peak on the 12th rather than the 11th, but a small peak anyways, nothing too significant. On the 15th there was an Axelis step-up order, but I imagine it was more so 
until the Cobalt Hunt event that brought people back in this case and maintained the interest for a bit. On the 17th, Ordinal Scale Anniversary brought some additional event reruns and bonuses alongside an OS banner featuring Eiji, Yuna, Asuna and Kirito, additional events and bonuses, which was quite the cool looking banner, but that period died down faster than I expected, that was quite the shame. Kohoro's birthday campaign starting on 22nd brought the game back up from a massive slump. The birthday banner featuring two new Kohoro skills as well as the daily free 11 pulls really brought people back into the game leading into the final days of February. And on the 28th we had the Rune Blade Order featuring Kohoro, Shilika, Shinon and Alice as well as the Floor 17 release but the boost was a little too late to salvage anything in February in any meaningful way. Looking back at it, the month was not any more barren than your usual low period and the banner art was quite lovely throughout February, so I'm particularly surprised by the bad result here. I really see no reason for it to be so low. Was there, you know, any big releases or updates in other mobile games this month? Because that's the only reasonable explanation I can think of, but now that I mention it, Every mobile gacha probably had a new Valentine's Day event, didn't they? Whereas Integral Factor, it had nothing, just reruns. So I suspect that may be the core problem here. I wonder if it's the PTSD from the Variant Showdown Valentine's event being slammed last year. If it's that, I'll just say, people were so mad about that one specifically, because the story was clearly written in bad faith towards Kirtan Asuna's relationship. If anything, People want to see more Kirito and Asuna, or alternatively, our character and Kohoru in Integral Factor. So how about we don't skip Valentine's event next year, shall we? Just be respectful to the relationship of the main duo of the series. Don't try to shove Alice into the event trying to wreck their relationship or whatever that was trying to do back in Variant Showdown. Okay, back on topic. On average, Integral Factor finished February about 30 ranks below that of January with a significantly lower revenue, finally bringing that upwards trend of the past year to an end. I would talk about Steam numbers too, but literally the exact same trend from PC players. Nothing different as you can see here in this chart, so I'm gonna spare you the time in this one. March has started somewhat strong with the floor release at the end of February, but nothing spectacular is happening at the moment. It is faring slightly better than February right now, but will likely end up staying under March of 2023 performance. With Integral Factor done, last but not least, Sword Online Fractured Daydream. 6 hour long initial closed beta period is behind us at the time of writing, with 2 longer periods for the weekend ahead. This is not a review video, so I'm just gonna say I exclusively played Argo for the 6 hour period and I enjoyed it a lot. We were playing with Scrambled and Shadow and due to the time the lobbies were generally quite empty. For those of you who don't know, the core feature of Fractured Daydream is that it is a 20 player co-op dungeon game. You can learn more about it by clicking the icon on the top right where I'll link you to my entire coverage video of what Fractured Daydream is about. But because the initial short period was past midnight for Americas and early work hours for Europe, the western lobbies were generally quite empty and with around 30 minutes of commitment per game, the available player count was clearly not enough to carry the available lobbies. On average we had 6 to 7 players in a lobby that were supposed to be filled with 20 players and instead the rest were just NPCs filling the game. The content and progression of what's available is quite fun, the beta clearly encourages you to test out the 6 available characters with their distinct classes which is what I will be doing on the weekend, I'll be streaming that too, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss out on it, with an extensive beta impressions video afterwards, and then another video with my hopes and dreams about the game, and what I wish would be there at release. But overall, I was very pleased, and if you're in the beta as well, you know, just make sure to be there when I livestream, and you can even join me as we play in the same lobby. Now, in terms of the actual popularity of the beta, we don't know the exact numbers, of course, across all the platforms, the game is cross-platform, but looking at the Steam numbers, it looks like people enjoyed the beta in general as well. 
throughout the six hours, there is no decline in player count that's clearly visible. It averages between 800 and 850, but the weekend numbers are going to give us a much better idea, at least on the Steam side of things. Not only is the longer period better to see the longevity of gameplay, it's also going to allow the Western players to actually play, after all, most people could not play during this first six hours in the West, as stated earlier, and PC players, they are mainly Western players to begin with. Here on your screen are the beta times for reference. If you're in the beta, a lot of you messaged me as to how you missed the initial beta period because you didn't even know the times. These are all in CET, so Central European Time, which is where my region is, and thus my email with beta key has this time zone. You can either put this into Google and it will tell you in your local time, or preferably, what you should be doing, your invite email has all of this information too in your time zone in the first place. So I recommend reading the message you received from Bandai Namco to not miss out on the remaining beta period. I promised you a short one, so this is all I have for Dead Game Report featuring SAO Games in February 2024. Look forward to the next DGR for stats and information on all SAO Games, and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon and join me in SAO Fractured Daydream Beta Friday to Sunday to be able to play together. Until next time, stay cool.